Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to class. Uh, today will be our last class. We'll finish chapter 13 today, the Son of God, and uh, then we can have our last assessment. Uh, so before we begin today's class, can one of you lead us in prayer, please? Anyone? Ma'am, can I pray? Yes, sure. Please. Thank you, Paramita. Dear Heavenly Father, as we gather here for our class, we ask for your guidance and wisdom to be with us. Open our hearts and minds to receive your word with understanding. May our time together be fruitful, filled with insights and blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Paramita. So, uh, uh, last uh, class, that's on Friday, we began looking at how did the Son of God walk on the earth. So we are studying chapter 13, the Son of God, and uh, we are looking at how the Son of God walked on the earth. Before that, we looked at uh, who is this God who uh, exists even before the foundation of the world. Uh, so we, we studied who God is. We also looked at uh, uh, what God completed uh, even before uh, the foundations of the world, even before he created uh, uh, the universe, even before he created the planets, even before time began. Uh, what did this great I am complete? And so those are the two things that we already studied and looked at. And last class, we began looking at uh, how uh, the great I am, how the Godhead, the God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit, how they uh, put into action or how they revealed or brought uh, into, uh, uh, into uh, he, how they brought things into being, um, even, uh, bef even as they had... Uh, thought about it, they planned about it, and even as everything was uh, completed in the heart uh, and the mind of God, even before uh, time began. So we saw um, uh, that the Son of God said that he would become man, and he would come down on the earth, and he would live like us, and he will reveal uh, the Father heart of God, and he will also uh, redeem mankind from sin. He will purchase mankind from sin. He will deliver us from sin, from death, and from Satan, and uh, would reinstate us or restore us uh, to uh, the place uh, or to the position that God created us to be in his image so that uh, we can um, uh, we can manifest his glory and we can also uh, uh, manifest who God is here on the earth. So we began looking at how did the Son of God walk on the earth. Um, we basically looked at, uh, give me a minute please. So we saw how the Son of God revealed, uh, even as he came down to the earth, even as he walked on the earth, the Son of God revealed the Father. Uh, he walked in intimate presence with the Father. He rested in the Father's love. Uh, he walked in obedience to the Father. He also walked in the power of the Holy Spirit. He destroyed the works of the evil one. He withstood every temptation and hence he was without sin. And he also completed the work of redemption. Um, he paid the redemption price. He paid the price um, and took the consequences for our sin. And uh, after he died on the cross and he paid the redemption price, he was raised back to life uh, with, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, and we see that the Son of God after that was um, uh, exalted and glorified with the Father and with the Holy uh, Spirit. So we see that once the redemption price was paid, once uh, the Son of God, um, you know, completed the work on the cross, and uh, he was, uh, you know, uh, God declared that the sacrifice that he made was the full, sufficient, perfect sacrifice. It pleased the heart of God. It appeased um, 
uh, the offering that had to be made once for all for sin. And uh, hence, we see that, you know, uh, there was uh, the Son of God was raised to life, uh, which shows us that resurrection is um, something that, you know, uh, uh, was what God was pleased with the Son of God, that he completed what he had sent him here on the earth to do. And uh, the Son of God uh, did the will of the Father. And hence, uh, the resurrection is a proof that uh, the price for sin was made once for all. And God the Father was pleased with that uh, sacrifice. And then we see that God said that, he will now reveal the secrets that was there with, within the Godhead, uh, what they had planned. Uh, it was not revealed till then, uh, because if it had been revealed, then, you know, uh, Satan and his uh, uh, foes, uh, you know, would not have allowed uh, the plan of redemption to be completed. They would have uh, done everything that they would have uh, to keep uh, the Son of God from dying on the cross, uh, but we know in spite of that, he would have completed uh, the work of uh, redemption. Okay, so uh, uh, we know that they would have tried to stop the plan, and hence everything that was conceived in, uh, uh, in the mind and the heart of the Godhead, you know, before the foundation of the world was kept a mystery till then. And uh, uh, God said, you know, that he was going to keep it as a secret until the work of redemption is complete. Now, since the work of redemption was complete and the Son of God was raised back to life, God said he will reveal his secrets and he began to reveal his secrets to uh, his people that is his body, the church. And we know that the early apostles wrote about this um, and... Uh, uh, that, uh, you know, and they said all that God was doing all along, uh, you know, is now revealed to us, now is made known to us. And uh, you and I get to partake in this plan of the ages uh, that God had planned. Uh, we are privileged people uh, as sons and daughters to know this mystery and uh, even as the mystery is being revealed to us okay so we see that the son of god was raised to life the son of god was exalted and glorified with the father and the spirit we read this in colossians chapter 1 verse 19 uh, where it's we've already read this verse for it pleased the father that in him all the fullness should dwell okay so once the son of god completed his work on the cross god the father uh, was pleased to give back all of the fullness, all of the uh, glory of deity that the Son of God had uh, before he, beca uh, be uh, before he beca became man, before he came down to this earth. And uh, we see that um, the fullness of the deity or the Godhead bodily dwelt in uh, Jesus Christ. We read this in Colossians chapter 2, verse 9 as well. Okay. So we looked at uh, uh, the Son of God, the Son of God even before uh, the foundations of the world, who he was. Uh, we looked at uh, who this great I am is, what they conceived, uh, what they had planned, what they had uh, decided to do, and how all of their plans was completed even before it began to unfold in history. We saw how the Son of God became uh, a man and he walked on this earth and what he accomplished even as he walked on the earth. So what does all this mean to you and me? Okay, so we studied all this. Uh, we looked at all of uh, this. We looked at uh, uh, so many scripture passages. Uh, what does it all mean to you and me? How does it affect you or how all of this affects you and me? And what does this imply to you and me? And what should our response be? Okay. So what do you think should be our response? Or what does it, all of this, what we learned about the Son of God, what does it imply to us? Uh, how does it affect us? Any answers? God is so mindful of us. God is mindful of me, yes.
What else? What should be our response to all that God has done for you and me? Or what does it imply to you and me? What should be our response? Hello, all of you in class. We studied so many different attributes of God, what He has done. Uh, Yes, we should be grateful. Thank you, Gertrude. To live a life that honors his sacrifice for us. Yes, thank you, Sanjay. Anyone else? Glorify God, humble ourselves, obey God, do what pleases him. Yes, thank you, Lucy. Okay, so um, thank you all for your responses. Uh, what should be our response? We need to believe in the Son of God. Okay, uh, now why would this great God who lives in unapproachable light, who no one can see or has ever seen, uh, or this God who is so awesome than all who surround him, you know, um, uh, why did he become man? Why did they have to create us in in their image? Why did they have to think of uh, being so mindful of us, uh, you know, or even um, redeeming us, restoring us back to our original position? Why did they just not leave us in sin, in our misery, you know, because we were so stubborn and arrogant and disobedient? Um, uh, but why would this great God go to such lengths to do what he has done and what he's doing uh, in each one of our lives? Uh, it is because he loves us so much. Okay, He did it because of his uh, love. If you can only understand how much God loves us and how much he desires us to be his uh, sons and daughters, then we would believe in him we would uh, you know be mindful of who he is we would live life that is honoring him you know glorifying god humbling ourselves obeying him and doing what is pleasing in his eyes so he did it because he loves us and he did it also because he desires uh, us to be his sons and uh, daughters isn't that uh, wonderful that is why he took the risk of uh, creating us as free moral beings, even before he knew that, you know, uh, uh, he knew that uh, we are going to sin, we are going to go away in our own ways, we are going to be disobedient, arrogant, uh, we are not going to, uh, you know, listen to him or obey him, uh, you know, we are going to uh, do what pleases us. In spite of that, he created us as free moral beings, even though he knew that, you know, we would plunge ourselves into deep darkness of sin, of moral degradation, of corruption. And, um, uh, you know, that's what the Bible says in John chapter 3, uh, verse, uh, verses 16 and 17. And it's a very familiar passage. It says, whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. So God offers us eternal life. He's a source of eternal life. And, um, you know, uh, even as the Son of God became the first, uh, uh, the second man, uh, the, uh, the second Adam, you know, the first man, the first Adam brought a sin, sickness, death, and curse into the world. Uh, but God said there is a way out. You know, if you believe in the Son of God, uh, uh, if you believe in the second man, if you believe in the uh, last Adam, you will have eternal uh, life. And that is what God is inviting each one of us. And that is what he's asking us to do as uh, his people uh, who have believed in him, who are his sons and daughters, you know, even as we're nearing uh, 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 the end times. Uh, he wants us to be people who are preaching uh, this good news, who are telling this good news that you know, God so loved the world that he gave his only son that if you believe in him, you shall not perish but have eternal uh, life. Uh, look at what 1 John 4, 9 to 10 says. Uh, can somebody read 1 John chapter 4, verses 9 and 10, please? Mm -hmm. 
Can somebody read 1 John chapter 4, verses 9 and 10? 1 John 4, verses 9 to 10. In this, the love of God was manifested toward us, that God has sent his only begotten Son into the world, that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his Son to be the propitiation for our sins. Amen. So how do we, thank you Sanjay, so how do we know, uh, how do we know God's love, how do we experience God's love, because his love was manifested, made known, made a reality to us, even as God sent his only son, and his son came down on the earth and he lived among us, and uh, you know, uh, uh, his son became a propitiation uh, for our sins, he, um, uh, he, uh, became that uh, uh, he took our place and he died in our place and he paid the redemption price for our uh, sins. So when we believe in the Son of God, we believe in his uh, in his in his death, his resurrection, uh, in his exaltation, in who he is, that he is God. You know, we have eternal life even as we believe in the Son of God, as we read in John chapter 3, verse 18. So can one of you please read John chapter 3, verse 18. Uh, someone else can read John chapter 20, verse 31. And someone else can read 1 John chapter 5, verses 12, 13, and 20. So that's John chapter 3, verse 18. John chapter 20, verse 31. And 1 John chapter 5, verses 12, 13, and 20. Can uh, different people read these verses, please? John chapter 3, verse 18. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Amen. Thank you, Warren. So when we believe, we are not condemned before God the Father, uh, but we are uh, justified, we are reconciled, and God looks, God the Father looks at us just as we have never sinned. John chapter 20, verse 31. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you may have life in his name. Amen. Thank you, Lucy. So by believing in the Son of God, you may have life. The life here is the Greek word is zoe, which is eternal life, the God kind of life. Uh, can someone else read 1 John chapter 5, verses 12, 13, and verse 20, please? John chapter 5, verse 12. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may know that you have eternal life, that, and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. Verse 20. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us understanding that we may know him who is true, and we are in him who is true in his son jesus christ that is the true god and eternal life amen thank you diksha so here we see that those who have the son those who believe in the son have life zoe life the god kind of life he who does not have the son does not have the zoe uh, and uh, uh, the apostle john is writing and saying that you know those who believe in the name of god these these things are written so that you can believe in in the son of god when you believe you have eternal um life and uh, you know that you would come to also an understanding of who this uh, son of god is even as he's come to reveal uh, the father uh, 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 to us, even as he's come to reveal the Father heart of God, the nature of God uh, to us. And um, uh, those who believe in him uh, live in the truth, know the truth, and also have eternal life. Okay. So, what should uh, our response be to the Son of God is that we believe in him 
And even as we believe in the Son of God, we have eternal life. And when we believe in the Son of God, you know, we are brought into the family of God. We are part of God's own family. And God's plan of the ages is being fulfilled in and through us. So each one of us, uh, the plan of the ages, imagine uh, what the God had it conceived even before the foundations of the world, the plans and the purposes that they had is now being fulfilled through the church and the church comprises of the saints that is you and me. So when we believe in the Son of God, we are brought into the family of God. And it's not just a privilege that we have, but it's also responsibility because God's plan of the ages is being fulfilled in and through uh, each one of us. Aren't you excited that, uh, you know, you are part of this great plan of God, which he has planned even before the foundations of the world. And God is looking up to each one of us, uh, even though we, we look at us as, um, you know, frail, weak human beings, uh, incompetent, incompetent uh, many times, uh, but God is looking at each one of us as individuals, uh, you know, who are going to be fulfilling the plan of the ages. Amen. Aren't you all excited about it? I hope you're excited. Uh, uh, so, you know, as sons and daughters, uh, thank you, as sons and daughters of God, uh, we have union with God through the Son of God. Uh, 1 John chapter 4, verse 15 says, Whoever confesses Jesus is the Son of God, abides in him, and he in God. Okay? So even as we are part of God's uh, family, even as we are sons and daughters, uh, we are united with God uh, um, uh, in his family. He is our Father. We are one with him. And uh, uh, it says here that, you know, whoever confesses Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him. The Holy Spirit dwells in us and he in God. We are in God. We spiritually are connected, united, uh, spiritually in union uh, with God. Okay. So what other privilege to, uh, privileges do we have as sons and daughters of God? We have the power to overcome uh, every attack of the evil one. Look at what 1 John chapter 5 verse 5 says. Can somebody read that please? 1 John chapter 5 verse 5. Who is he who overcomes the world but he who believes that Jesus is the son of God? Amen. Thank you, Diksha. So uh, who can overcome the world? Because we live in a world, it's a fallen world, a world that is corrupted because of sin. And the prince of this world is Satan and his uh, forces are ruling and reigning. And uh, it says, who can overcome the world? But uh, it is those who believe in the Son of God. So even as we believe in the Son of God, we become children of God. We have uh, we are united with God and we receive this power, uh, the dunamis power. The uh, dunamis, the, 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 the Greek word is dunamis. The English word is dynamite. And you know what a dynamite can do, right? So that is the power that is in us. And that power that is given to us is we are able to overcome every attack of the evil one. And even as I said, that we spiritually identify with Christ's uh, uh, death, his burial, his resurrection, his ascension. He is seated at the right hand of God. Even as we are seated at the right hand of God, we identify with that position spiritually. You know, uh, we are in a place of position and authority, um, and we can uh, uh, we can overcome every attack, every work of the um, enemy. And there is something more that the Bible tells us that when we believe in the Son of God uh, and we become part of His family, we are sons and daughters. The Scripture says, you know, that the Son of God is a prototype of uh, sons and uh, daughters. So the Son of God was a prototype for the sons and uh, daughters. So God is saying that his plan for us is basically to be conformed to the image of the Son of God. This was the plan that he had before the beginning. And this is the plan that we are part of today. And this is what God, the Holy Spirit, is working in and through us, sanctifying us, 
cleansing us, uh, making us more Christ-like. And we are here uh, to um, be Christ-like so that we can uh, manifest the glory of God, uh, who he is and what he does uh, in and through our uh, lives. So even as the first Adam, you know, was a prototype of uh, sin, degradation, moral degradation, moral impurity, um, uh, slaves to uh, death and Satan. Uh, he was a prototype of that, but that, which means the first of the kind, a sample uh, which rest of us followed. But the Son of God was a prototype for the sons and daughters of God. Okay, so even as even when we believe uh, Jesus. Um, uh, Christ as our Lord and Savior, we become part of God's family. Uh, we also, uh, you know, uh, now have the nature or the, uh, 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 the the nature of the Son of God, and we uh, we are, uh, we are part of His family. So the Son of God was prototype, and we are His sons and uh, daughters. So you know, we are being conformed to the image of the Son of God. We are made uh, to be Christ-like uh, so that we can manifest his glory here on the earth. So that is one of the plan of the ages because God said, let us make man in our image, uh, in our likeness, um, uh, you know, so that they can uh, uh, fill the earth with the glory of God, but we failed. And when the Son of God came, uh, the, the last Adam, the second man, who is a new prototype, you know, uh, we are also being conformed to uh, his likeness and to his um, image. And we read this in Romans chapter 8, verse 29, where it says, Who God foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, that he might be the firstborn among many uh, brethren. Okay, um, look at what Hebrews chapter 2 verse 10 says. Uh, can somebody read that please? And also 1 John chapter 14 verse 17. Can one of you read Hebrews chapter 2 verse 10? And uh, someone else can read 1 John chapter 4 verse 17. For it was fitting for him, for whom are all things, and by whom are all things, in bringing many sons to glory, to make the captain of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Amen. So here we see that it was fitting for God uh, to bring us all, uh, you know, who are his sons and daughters, uh, to be in his image or to manifest his glory. 1 John chapter 4, verse 17. One John four seventeen. This is how love is made complete among us, so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. Amen. It says uh, the last uh, part of that verse, the last phrase. Because as He is, so are we in this world. Because as He is, so are we in this world so the reason uh, maybe some of you are wondering what is my uh, purpose you know here on this earth why has god created me what is uh, god's plan and purpose for my life so one of god's plan and purpose for your life is uh, you know so that you can be conformed to his image and his uh, likeness and you can manifest his glory on here on the earth because as he is uh, so are we in this world. He wants us to be like him here in this world and do what he has, uh, he had come to do, what he has set as an example, a model, uh, so that we can do and we can fill this earth with his glory and bring many uh, others or bring the all of them uh, into his uh, family to be his sons and uh, daughters. Okay. So what is our purpose to be uh, like the son? You know, he's like, uh, uh, the Son of God is the last Adam. Uh, uh, he's the prototype, the example, the sample, the first of his kind, uh, who is perfect. Uh, and so we also are called, or God's plan and purpose for our life is to be conformed to the last Adam. 
And our purpose is to live like the last Adam, to live like the heavenly man, because now we have his nature. Uh, we have uh, his life flowing in and through us. Uh, Sanjay, can I request you to please uh, mute your mic, please? Thank you. So this is what uh, John writes, and we read that whoever bites in him should walk as he walked. And it's the Holy Spirit who works in us, who's changing us uh, from glory to glory um, uh, to, be, to be conformed to his image and to his uh, likeness. Okay, So that is one of the purposes uh, why God has created us. Uh, and uh, also why he paid that redemption uh, price. The other purpose is so that, you know, we can be made heirs of God and joint heirs with the Son of God. And we saw this as the plan of God even before the beginning of uh, the foundations of the world that God planned uh, to make us his children, his hairs, and joint hairs with the Son of God. And so we see that plan is, is, uh, is being unfolded, is uh, taking uh, coming into fruition, coming into place, uh, even as Jesus uh, died and resurrected and ascended back to the Father, you know, um, uh, where uh, uh, this plan of making us uh, hairs of God and son, joint hairs with the Son of God is being uh, fulfilled. So we are here on this earth to usher in his kingdom here on earth. And that is why Jesus said, you know, uh, uh, prayed and said, uh, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So another purpose or plan that God has for our lives uh, is not only to believe in the Son of God, not only to be his sons and daughters, not only to be conformed to the image and the likeness of the Son of God and to manifest his glory here on earth, but uh, the other reason or the purpose that uh, uh, God redeemed us, or created us, is so that we can usher in his kingdom here on earth. We, can, uh, we are here to unfold his kingdom as hairs and joint hairs, which means... Whatever is in heaven, uh, we release that here on earth. Whatever is not in heaven, we bind that here on earth. And that is our uh, purpose. That is why God has called us and created us uh, and, uh, you know, what he has predestined us uh, for. Okay, like we read in Romans chapter 8, verse 17, um, or uh, can read from Romans chapter 8, verses 14 to 17. Can somebody read that, please? Romans 8, 14 to 17. Romans 8, 14 to 17. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. Amen. Thank you, Sanjay. So we are called to be heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. So what is our mission here on earth? It is to bring down his kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. And God is unfolding this his eternal plan uh, through your life, through each one of our lives. Um, and so your life has much significance and has much purpose. Okay, so look at your life as... Uh, uh, not only just being redeemed by the blood of uh, Jesus Christ and that you have uh, the Zoe life, the eternal life, but also that you, God has a plan and a purpose. And I already have enlisted for us what's God's plan and purpose. And his mission, his mission is to bring down his kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven. And which is very simple. Whatever is not in heaven, uh, we bind that here on earth. Whatever is in heaven, we release that here on earth. So there is, there is no peace in your 
family, in your surroundings, in your workplace, you declare that if there is no prosperity, you declare that if there is uh, sickness, you bind that. Uh, there's no sickness in heaven, you release healing here on earth. If there is uh, no wholeness, uh, if there is no peace, there's no reconciliation, there is no love, there is no joy, there's no righteousness, because uh, the kingdom of uh, uh, God is righteousness, uh, peace and joy. Okay, so you release that into your environment, in, in 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 your workplace, in your home, in your marriage, in your relationships, in in your business, in your uh, uh, in everything that you're doing. Just release, uh, 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 you know, what is in heaven here on earth, and whatever you see is not of God's kingdom here on this earth. In your in your world, in your sphere of influence. Uh, in your uh, mountain that God has called you to be, whether it's art, entertainment, education, uh, business, uh, family, you know, you bind those things. So uh, you might uh, think, hey, I'm not a pastor, I'm just a student, I'm a housewife, or, you know, uh, I, I'm not um, uh, an evangelist. But these are things that you can just do in your home, in, in the confines of the four walls, just pray and bind and release and... Uh, you know, um, God is a God who answers our prayer and he's a God who's a uh, God of the impossible and he will release and he will do what he uh, uh, has purposed us to do and what he has called us to do, even as we stand in the gap and intercede. So the church uh, is uh, comprises of the saints, that is you and I, and the church is God's, uh, uh, the church uh, is a foundation or the pillar of God's truth, you know, uh, the truth that Jesus Christ is the son of the living uh, God. Even as uh, Jesus turned around to his disciples and asked his disciples, who do you say that I am? In Matthew chapter 16, verses 15 and uh, 19. And Simon Peter answers, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, the church uh, is... Uh, you know, the foundation uh, and where this truth has to be taught, needs to be uphold, it needs to be uh, uh, preserved, uh, it has to be spoken of and spread that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. So G uh, the Godhead is looking to the church uh, to, to do this. And um, even as Jesus says in Matthew chapter 16, verses 15 to 19 and verse 18, he tells Peter, you are that rock and I will build my church and the gates of Hades, Hades shall not prevail against this. And so on this rock, uh, upon this truth that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God, uh, uh, God says, I will build my church. And so this is the truth. This is the foundation of the church's truth that Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. And we are supposed to, it is a pillar, and we are supposed to uphold this truth, upheld this truth, and also promote and propagate this uh, truth. So the church that is um, solid uh, is, you know, stands on this established truth that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, He is God incarnate, and even the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Yes, the enemies of the church will fight against this truth because it is foundational. Uh, they are also beginning to understand the mysteries that God is unveiling through the church. Uh, the enemy will fight against this truth, uh, uh, but uh, the church has to uphold that Jesus is the Son of God. He is alive today. Uh, he does the same things that he did back in the Bible when he walked on the earth. He hasn't changed uh, in him, the fullness of the Godhead dwells. And even today, you know, in his name, people can be saved, can receive eternal life. In his name, sickness, diseases can be healed. Uh, in his uh, name, the works of the devil can be destroyed. And in his name, uh, people can receive healing and uh, wholeness. And he is alive today. And Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. So this is the truth. This is the foundation of the church. This is the pillar of the church. And, uh, you know, a church that is a solid, uh, you know, is a church that stands on this established truth and promotes this truth and also 
you know, preserves uh, this truth, even as uh, the gates of uh, hell shall come against it, but shall not prevail. Okay, so this is our uh, mission. This is our assignment as the church, as the body of Christ, uh, to preserve this truth and also to promote this truth that Jesus Christ is the Son of the Living God. Amen. Okay, thank you, everyone. I've done with the uh, um, all the chapters for Christology. Anyone has any questions on chapter thirteen? Any questions on chapter 13? I hope you've been listening carefully. There's so much of uh, deep theological truths in this lesson. Um, I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed you know, teaching it. It's just such powerful truths. Any, uh, any questions, any doubts? Yeah, praise be to God for his uh, wisdom. Uh, I have a question. The assignment you posted, uh, you will be posting again. Uh, to get through, as I had, uh, uh, as I had mentioned on the stream page, that I accidentally posted uh, the assessment that I had prepared for um, uh, the third, third year. Yes. Yeah. So that was not meant for you all. But we will, uh, if you have any questions now on this chapter, we I will answer that. Or if you have any doubts or clarifications, and then we'll move on to decide when we'll have the last assessment. OK, sister. Yeah. Any questions, any doubts, any clarifications? No? OK, I hope you all enjoyed uh, uh, this course, Christology. Uh, please take some time to read it in your holidays. Um, and you know, they are, they are important theological truths, which are very foundational. Uh, if you want to teach and preach, and um, you know, um, and it's our responsibility to uphold the truth, to teach the truth to people. So please uh, go through your notes. Uh, study, listen to the lectures uh, so that you can teach others as uh, well. Okay, so when can we have our last assessment? Is it okay if I can post it uh, next Tuesday, which is 16th? Or is that too late? Thank you, Mr. Gertrude. 16th is okay? OK, so we'll, uh, I'll post it on 16th. You all can submit it on the 19th. Um, uh, thank you, everyone, for being part of the Christology class. Uh, uh, if you have any doubts, you can still call, reach out to me, and I will answer your doubts. Um, but this is our last class. And um, uh, have a, uh, I don't know if you say blessed, but a good uh, holiday. It's not a holiday, actually. Most of you are working. Um, but yeah, I'll see you in the in the new semester. Uh, till then, God bless and um, fulfill God's purpose for your life. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you, Lucy, Sanjay, Andrew, Pratt, Angeline, Warren. Thank you, thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you, Nelson. <laughs>